All right, in this video, I would like to show you how you can use the graph mapper and also talk about functions or as they're called in Grasshopper expressions. So let's start with a simple range and we'll keep the default values. So if you look at it in a panel, we get the usual from zero to one in 10 steps. And I'm going to use this as the input for our graph mapper and if we plug it in nothing will happen because we first need to select what type of function we want to have in our graph mapper so I'm going to right click go to graph types and I'm going to select a Gaussian to begin with that wasn't a Gaussian uh, actually that is a Gaussian but I want a parabola there we go so what does a graph mapper do the graph mapper um, takes these values as input and then evaluates a function at these points and that's the red lines that you can see here so it's evaluating this parabola function at these points and then at the other side it's going to output those values there we go and you can see that the middle of this uh, the minimum of this parabola is in the middle between 1 and 0 and since our input goes from 0 to 1, um, we get this, um, this list of values going from 1 to 1 and 0 in the middle. And if we then use a construct point block and use these as our x's and the output of the graph map as a y's, we get that same shape here. Now, if you double click on the graph mapper, you can set the bounds of this graph mapper do something else from 0 to 1 or let's say your domain here goes from 0 to 100 then you could also set that in here and um, the nice thing about the graph mapper is that you can um, kind of intuitively, intuitively shape the function so you grab these handles and then you can drag them around and you can see how that changes the shape of our um, of our points and you can use other functions as, as well. So, for example, um, a Bezier curve, which starts as a straight line, but as you drag the handles of these tangent curves, you can also shape that. And you can shape the, the start and the end point as well. And this is really useful because you can intuitively play around with different shapes for your surfaces or your division lines or whatever. But sometimes it's um, better to have more precision and to accurately define what the function is that you want to evaluate. And this might be the case if you exactly want to hit the corners um, with a function that goes to zero at certain values. And for that you can use the expression block. And the expression block starts off with two inputs by default, an x and a y, but if you zoom in you can add further inputs or remove them and I'm actually going to remove all except one let's stay in two dimensions I'm going to have our range as an input and then I'm simply going to create a parabola so I'm going to type in x squared but you could do whatever you can think of um, mathematically I'm going to hit OK and then we can use this instead of the graph mapper output as our y and because I typed in x squared, we of course get this nice parabola. Now, uh, let's make things a little bit more complex. I'm going to remove all this, and I'm actually going to create a surface using functions. So I'm going to start again with the same range. Um, but now I'm going to use this to create points in two dimensions. So just as we're used to construct point I'm going to use the same range as an input for X and Y and graft one of those inputs and I'm actually going to do the same thing with the expression so I'm going to put same values into X and Y but also graft this X so we're getting 121 points as output and we're also getting 121 um, values out of this uh, this expression and 
as an expression, I'm actually going to use um, x squared plus y squared. I'm going to divide that by 4. And now I'm going to use the, the result of this as my z value. So, uh, actually, I've already got a construct points. So here we go. This is now our z value. And if we go to perspective mode and zoom in on um, those points, you can see we get this parabolic shape. And actually, I'm going to want to create some f shape of a roof roundabout. So I'm actually going to change this domain to not go from 0 to 1, but from, I don't know, let's say negative 2 to positive 2. I'm going to go construct domain. And I'm going to have a slider with 2. And I'm going to, s that's going to be my end. And my start is actually just going to be the negative of that. And if we do that, we get this, it really looks like a surface. And actually, we can turn these points into a surface by using the grid, um, the surface grid command. Put in those points. And it doesn't create a surface yet because it needs a second input, which is the number of points in u direction. The number of points in u direction is, of course, the length of this, the length of this list. So I'm going to use list length to obtain that, plug that in, and then the last thing I need to do is flatten. And then we've got the surface. And because I want it to, to be a roof instead of a bowl, I'm once again going to use a negative block. And there we go. Hide those two point groups, and now we've got this roof. Now, um, one alternative to using the expression block is to use an evaluate block. And the difference between the two is that if I use an evaluate block, it gives me the same inputs and I can also add to these um, as I can with the expression block. But the evaluate block takes the function as a separate input. So I can use a panel to then type in my function. So I can go here, and I'm going to copy this. There we go. And use this as my function. And then all it needs is the right amount of inputs, graph that x. And we should have this exactly the same surface if we plug it in. Now let's see. I want to play with this for value. I could, of course, add another value and then change this expression to z, for example. And then I plug in a slider. And then I could play around with the outputs of this function. And actually, if you like, you can rename these variables. And you can do that um, with um, nearly every block in Grasshopper. You can simply right click on it. And then I could rename this to, let's say, scale. And then, of course, nothing works anymore because I still need to rename it in here. And then we can have actual descriptive names within our expressions. All right. And this can also be useful if you want to try different functions, maybe. So if you have two different functions um, and you want to just try different ones, and then you could just change the input here. So let's use a different function. Let's go cosine of x plus cosine of y. OK. And then let us expand our domain a little bit and increase the number of points. There we go. 
So that's the cosine of x plus the cosine of y. And then you can just start playing around with different functions. Um, I'm actually going to take this function. I'm going to have the parabola down here. And I'm going to add these two functions together. And we'll see what happens. There we go. Um, maybe make this slightly smaller. Yeah. Let's go over here. Bake that. Have a look at it. And of course, this is a very simple example of what you can do with um, functions, or as they're called in grasshopper expressions. Um, for a real-world example, where they used um, mathematical functions to describe a surface, uh, take a look at the roof of the British Museum, done by Foster and Partners. It's, uh, there's a paper on the actual development of the formula, which they used to describe the surface. Very interesting. All right, but generally I showed you how you can use both the expression block, the evaluate block, and the graph mapper, graph mapper to um, use functions within Grasshopper. Thank you for watching.